Good evening. This talk aims at analyzing three United States-based artists who in their works use the American flag as a point of departure for contemplation on the current state of the United States of America. The selected works of art have approached the familiar image of the stars and stripes in a new and rather controversial way that may suggest that the original associations the flag entailed may have drifted away from the reality, to put it mildly. That three works of art employing the American flag that this talk analyzes are Dred Scott's What is the Proper Way to Display a U.S. Flag from 1989, Barbara Krieger's Untitled or Questions from 1991, and Sean Scully's Ghost Gun from 2017. A flag is a symbolic mark which is to remain unaltered and instantly recognizable, the kind of a symbol with which one identifies and is proud of when showed on TV or embroidered onto national team's clothing. Each country's citizens are taught to draw it, distinguish it among other emblems. It is presented in pivotal and challenging times as a factor that unifies and evokes national pride. Together with an anthem, a flag constitutes an expression of patriotism and a sense of solidarity and belonging. It also grounds the nation the pivotal ability of being able to distinguish itself from other states. Anthony D. Smith, a British scholar, claims, quote, it is necessary for a nation to possess a name in a world of nations. It could hardly function without one. Much the same can be said about the national flag and the national anthem, though these are more public symbols and on display, even the unwaved flag. Together, these three symbols signal the uniqueness and the setting apart of the nation, and all of them help to accord the nation's respect, even all, as is the American ceremony of saluting the flag. And by them all, they particularize and popularize the nation as the sole and irreplaceable possession of its members." Unquote. This somewhat romantic perspective of the flag paves the way for various mythologies and national narratives that, as attached to vast historical background and complex international relations, should not be a subject of ridicule or satire. It carries a serious burden and requires a particular code of conduct that, more often than not, is actually stated in a country's constitution. The flag ought not to be disrespected, subverted, or used in a questionable manner. In the visual mainstream of symbols, seldom does one encounter a flag that is more recognizable than the American one. Its presence in popular culture is unparalleled, which, when one takes into consideration a relatively short history of the United States of America, may seem surprising and begs the question, why, how did a country that dates back to the 18th century manage to inscribe its flag into the global visual canon far more deeply than the nations whose origins reach the Middle Ages? This observation does only come from the outside of the United States, perhaps not necessarily. Interestingly enough, even in 1919, William Norman Guthrie, a clergyman and a rector of University of Chicago, among others, noticed that this American predilection for the use of flag, or as he called it, stars and stripes, or old glory, or the star-spangled banner, in his book titled The Re Religion of Old Glory, analyzed, quote, the cult of the flag, unquote, and officially submitted vexillolatry, the cult of the flag a phenomenon yet to be examined in connection with other nations. I am inclined to believe that its significance does not dwell in the creative or visual aspects of the flag. It is not surprising in its form, as it is, as a majority of the flags, a rectangle with various geometrical shapes on it. Why thus then it seem to communicate more than any other flag? The visual symbolic stratum is rather easy to decipher. The stars represent the 50 states of the Union, while the stripes stand for the original 13 colonies. Thus, its power to evoke, stimulate, and or maintain patriotism, 
must come from either another layer of meaning that has been arbitrarily attached to it, or from manipulating or tampering with the existing one. This talk presents and analyzes three works of art that employ and creatively manipulate the fabric of the American flag. Not only do they subvert mainstream mythologies and narratives, but also communicate an alternative interpretation and reflections upon the nation. Clearly, such a banner is a significant cultural artifact and its meaning is virtually impossible to alter, yet by means of creative artistic techniques, the highly romanticized narrative disseminates and proves that no construct, including a flag, is immune to scrutiny and at times ridicule. A flag symbolism resonates with various, often contradicting tones. It is present in school, government building, and raised at important sports events to remind people of their country and evoke a sense of unity. But it also may be aggressively waved by members of Ku Klux Klan or radical nationalists. It may be a source of pride as well as a misconstrued self-identity. Certainly, its meaning is in a state of flux, which aligns with one of the paragraphs of the United States Flag Code when one reads, quote, the flag represents a living country and is itself considered a living thing, unquote. Therefore, who are the inhabitants of the living country the flag represents? What values and beliefs are dominant and shared by all those citizens? One of the earliest ideas is, of course, loyalty. It may be achieved by an oath that to many Europeans, and not only Europeans, seems astounding. The oath is the Pledge of Allegiance created around the time of the Civil War and is recited by school children across the country. They express their fidelity to the symbol and get used to external practices manifesting elusive concepts. This social routine was especially noticeable after the horrid attacks on September 11, as, quote, American flags were hung not only from windows and porches, they also appeared bound on bumpers, tattooed on various body parts, as a wallpaper screen on cell phones, on all types of attire, from boxers and socks to winter coats, collectibles, pins, and many more. As background for television broadcasts and government speeches, flags were ubiquitous." Unquote. A flag became a link connecting the traumatized nation. Washington Post noted that, quote, Walmart reportedly sold 111,000 flags on September 11, a quarter of a million the next day, compared with 6,400 and 10,000 on the same day a year earlier, unquote which suggests that by displaying the flag, people shared their pain and the flag itself epitomized their hopes and solidarity. After all, it is not uncommon for various symbols and artifacts to acquire significant meaning by being embedded in cultural rituals and practices. Well, can this mechanism be reversed? Can a specific creative treatment of a flag trigger certain behaviors? especially in complex, diversified, and tumultuous social atmosphere. A flag is a vulnerable artifact in hands of those who wish to exploit people's patriotic attachments. And even though the concept of identity politics is predominantly used for meaningful purposes, it may go astray. The phrase, the phrase identity politics is a term that refers to a particular political attitude shared by a group of people united whether by race, social background, religion, or any other factor. The aim of such a community is to gain power and acknowledgement by and within social and political mainstream. Noble as in is undoubtedly is, it of course may be a subject to manipulation. Dred Scott, Chicago-born and raised artist, has pinpointed this irregularity and used art to comment on such hypocrisy. His bold and apologetic installation has questioned the thus far accepted norms regarding the flag. The flag as such should never touch the ground or be stepped on, burned, or destroyed on purpose. 
The flag code prohibits also any commercial use of the image of the flag. It should not be embroidered, printed, or otherwise impressed on such articles as cushion, handkerchiefs, napkins, boxes, or anything intended to be discarded after temporary use. But somehow this rule maintains ignored, whereas other rules seem to be almost sacred. This is the flag by Dred Scott, and this is the rest of the installation. This 18... 1988 multimedia installation, What is the Proper Way to Display a U.S. Flag, gained instant notoriety and caused a nationwide controversy. The work of art itself is an assembly of different objects. It consists of a hanging picture that is a photo montage of South Korean students burning the American flag and holding a sign that says, Yankee Go Home, SOB, and flag-draped coffins of American troops. On the montage, one reads, quote, what is the proper way to display a U.S. flag? End quote. Below the picture, there is a small shelf, and on it, there are books with, at least at the beginning of the installation, blank pages. On the floor, there is a spread American flag. Scott's installation invites and is validated by active audience. The patrons, when encouraged to provide their answers to the titular what is the proper way to display a U.S. flag? And as they approach the books to write their responses, they inevitably stepped on the flag. In designing his work in such a tricky way, he sets up a trap for the audience as they need to consider their priorities and beliefs. Red Scott has published on his website some of the reactions of the visitors. Quote, I am a German girl. If we Germans would admire our flag as you all do, we would be called Nazis again. I think you do have too much trouble about this flag, unquote. Proving that the ubiquity of the flag may go beyond being a source of pride and start posing a threat. After the work had been first presented, people offered hundreds of pages with their replies and impressions, and an equally vast group sent official complaints about the installation and the way the artist used the American flag. Then President Bush Sr. announced what is the proper way disgraceful. This led to the US Congress passing legislation aimed at protecting the flag. And then the Senator Bob Dole of Kansas, a disabled veteran of World War II, suggested a new legislation amending federal law and making it a criminal offense to display American flag on the ground. He claimed, quote, now I don't know much about art, but I know desecration when I see it, unquote. To oppose such strong political reactions, the artist with several other people burn American flags on the US Capitol steps. Artists' actions invite the sensitive conundrum. Should any work of art, regardless of its form and objectives, be banned by the law? Scott's installation could be read in Deleuze and Guattari's terms when an assemblage serves as a methodological tool or a point of departure, departure for realizing and further examining social intricacies and complex rhizomatic relations. Such a creative, fragmentary approach to media exhibits fluidity of the represented concept, which is precisely the case with Scott's work. His way of depicting American flag subverts the traditional ways of portraying it. The artist breaks the flag code in order to ask important questions about nation's priorities. Is it more acceptable to send soldiers to die or to lay flag on the ground? Why must the flag not touch the floor, whereas hundreds of thousands of homeless people have no choice but to sleep on the ground? The structure of Scott's installation is a disruption of familiar social organization that navigates the lives of citizens. However, by introducing a somewhat topsy-turvy hierarchy, the flag on the floor, the coffins at the top, he shows that what is considered profane may be of more importance than what has been thus far lobbied as sacred. This, of course, is not the first instance of an assemblage piece that offers a social commentary. Daniel Miller and Heather Horst, scholars and editors of Digital Anthropology, Anthropology, demonstrate their study of a mobile phone in Jamaica and its people. They claim corresponds to the idea behind the assemblage. Quote, 
There is no fixed thing called a cell phone or fixed group called Jamaicans. Rather, this book will seek to find out why Jamaicans have become in the light of their use of the cell phone and what the cell phone has become in the light of its use by Jamaicans, unquote. Assemblage and installation art also allow its creators to formulate new statements using everyday objects and in so doing, revising the status quo. The question that Scott is really asking is about the nation's priorities. If the state lets millions of people without homes sleep on the floor, should a flag be really held in higher esteem? Certainly, one of the American core values is freedom the struggle to obtain it, the fight to keep it, and a constant will to defend it. Scott's installation is an expression of such freedom of speech and artistic expression. His case, as well as other artists who decided to contemplate the construct of American flag and patriotism, and did so in a controversial manner, reveal a certain paradox. A work of art that to many may constitute a defilement of a beloved symbol is indeed protected by what that symbol in question represents, as it is expression of freedom of speech under the First Amendment to the United States Constitution. American writer and journalist Walter Isaacson noticed this irony, quote, the flag is so revered because it represents the land of the free, and that freedom includes the ability to use or abuse the flag in protest, unquote. This is why the attempt to protect the Star Spangled Banner have proved to be futile. In 2005, for example, Hillary Clinton co-sponsored a bill that would fine and even imprison people who commit desecration of the flag. And in 2016, President-elect Donald Trump tweeted, quote, nobody should be allowed to burn the American flag. If they do, there must be consequences, perhaps loss of citizenship or a year in jail, unquote. In reaction to post-election protesters burning the old glory, they seem to have ignored two earlier cases of such attempts that had Supreme Court uphold the First Amendment of the United States Constitution that warrants everyone the freedom of speech, including political expression, and in consequence, allows manipulation of the fabric of the American flag, whether one may find it unpatriotic or shocking. Visuality is without a doubt one of the strongest forms of expression and communication. Linked with national symbolism and a desire to scrutinize the political landscape of one's time, it becomes a powerful phenomenon that is impossible to disregard. Especially if the message is distinct and pronounced, as is the case with Barbara Krieger. This representative on conceptual art has been using, among others, cutouts, poster, pop art aesthetics, commercial slogan style, photo montages, and chosen feminism, politics, the notion of power and social injustice as her subject matter. Krieger text-oriented works were one of the first examples of media appropriations works in the 70s and 80s, and their popularity was due to the recognizable language of TV commercials and ads, as well as their satirizing undertone. Krieger, a keen observer of the American political scene, used the American flag as a reminder of power struggle that polarizes the nation. The untitled work she created in 1991, and there you have it, uh, usually is referred to as questions, is a monumental mural in red, white, and blue painted on the wall of Los Angeles Museum Temporary Contemporary. The composition of the work resembles the one of the American flag. The bold white text on red background asks, who is free to choose? What does time? Who is beyond the law? Who is bought and sold? Who follows orders? Who salutes longest? Who prays loudest? Who dies first? Who laughs last? So these questions are set in the context of power in the United States. And in the left upper rectangle, in the view of the white stars, one sees the following statement. Look for the moment when pride becomes contempt. The political context for the moral is the Reagan and Bush senior era heavily criticized for elitism and abuse of power. Putting such uncomfortable questions of a national symbols renders them impossible to ignore, especially if they become a background for a group of police officers 
In 1992, LA police were marching in front of Morrill to stifle the riots taking place in the city. Hardly does one see a work of art placed in a more perfect social context. The artist herself admitted, it was Bush first and everyone was wearing flags, recalls artists. And oh my God, the war, it was just horrific, unquote. Even though it was made over three decades ago, this uncannily prophetic work is just as valid today. With the current political climate, the 1% and class differences, the moral's message rings true. The story of the creative process of Krieger's work is also an interesting one. The original design of the moral included the text of the Pledge of Allegiance, surrounded by the questions in bold. However, some of the locals complain about that composition. As it turned out, the moral was facing the place when tens of thousands of Japanese Americans were shipped off to internment camps during Second World War. And in those camps, internees were forced to recite the Pledge of Allegiance. Such tragic irony resulted in the oath being removed, but the questions were left. This choice may suggest that questioning takes precedence over obedient reciting. Her imaginative way with words and the sheer size of the questions invite, if not force, contemplation. The fact that this almost flag has been placed in a living context within people to whom the flag may be a symbol of aggression makes the work of art all the more valuable and its questions even more so current. Another interesting statement made on the omnibus issue of aggression and the visual representation of the flag has been made by an Irish-born but America-based painter, Sean Scully, and his 2017 painting titled Ghost Gun. And this is the Ghost Gun from 2017. His thus far artistic achievements include mostly vibrant and rather cheerful abstract pieces, but the current events in American schools and malls have triggered a shift in his subject. His recent 2017 series, Ghost Gun, leans towards figurative art. The series consists of eight flags resembling rectangles that display a gun. The more traditional canvas were substituted with metal based and the established position of the stars was also changed. Instead of being evenly painted on the blue rectangle, they seem to have collapsed on the bottom in a pile. The stripes are even painted in a casual manner. The red and white are faded and stained. The flag's aura turned from cheerful and proud into disturbed and miserable. What kind of an identity can be built upon a heap of beautiful stars? Scully's vision of contemporary America is that of a land filled with violence that threatens its own people. The artist found a new way of interpreting a flag in painting, which is hardly, of course, a novel in the art world, as, for instance, Jasper Jones has depicted the American flag many a times. That is a direct criticism of the America's obsessions with firearms that Scully, as a non-American, finds baffling and utterly dangerous. The series was made, quote, to chronicle anxieties about raising a child in a society when the right to bear arms is constitutionally absolute, end of quote, and where one's freedom puts other people's life at risk. The Irishman sees how threatening such a pattern is and summarizes his observations. Now bullets are sprayed into American streets like rain, and its children fall, becoming ghosts, he writes in an Instagram post. The land of the free is a ghost of what it once promised to be. The flag that had been a source of pride became a reminder of senseless crimes committed against the most vulnerable. The freedom it stood for has been replaced by a sense of imminent danger, the painter notes, quote, this is a country that's killing its children, unquote. The title of the series corresponds to his point of view. The victims become ghosts, and so is the freedom of the American dream. The United States of America is the first democracy in the world, has enjoyed the status of the promised land for a long time, implying its superiority to other nations. Nonetheless, the abuse of power and general distrust towards the country's authorities resulted in a shattered identity 
and dissolution of the idealized image of the United States. Scully indeed deconstructed the symbol and symbolism of the US, and this artistic process has been inspired by forlorn events from November 2014, when a 12-year-old, Tammy Rice, was shot by a police officer in Cleveland. The artist himself confessed, when I saw that little boy Tamir shot at a point blank range, I thought the country is beyond repair, unquote. His interpretation of the American flag implies that the intended symbolism needs to be reconsidered as the social and political scene of contemporary America has declined. Each country has its own metonymic symbol, be it a Dutch windmills or Australian plateau, but one scene they entail a specific set of associations and values. For the US, such an icon was the flag. Scully's work, together with Barbara Krieger Morrill and Dred Scott's installations, express a certain disappointment with what was promised and what was delivered by the people in power. If, originally, the American flag was an emblem aiming at the uniting people, the artistic consensus is that is a symbol failed. Thank you very much. <laughs>